The Portland Trailblazers had a remarkable turnaround this season. They started 16 and 16, but finished strong with a 33 and 17 record and third in the rest West. And their run included a 13 game winning streak tied for second longest streak in franchise history. And the success was thanks in part to Damian Lillard and CJ McCollum, who combined for 48.2 points per game, making them the second highest scoring starting backcourt in the NBA. And we now welcome in Neil O'Shea, the president of basketball operations of the Portland Trailblazers. And Neil, you guys won 49 games this season, finishing third in the West. I'm sure you probably started your offseason a little bit earlier than you wanted to and expected to. But how do you think you guys can take that next step in the West next year? Well, I think we have to take advantage of the fact that the playoff series against New Orleans, you know, it definitely exposed some deficiencies we have in terms of experience on the roster. Uh, you know, you know, since we lost Lamarcus a few years ago, we've been kind of in a build mode. We've been building around Damon, CJ, and you know, we've been playing. You know, as Bobby knows from his time, you know, in Brooklyn, we've been playing in the margins a little bit, trying to resurrect certain players, find diamonds in the rough, you know, develop our draft picks. And I think, I think it's time now to realize, you know, we're going to be a consistent playoff team, and now we need to make decisions based on having players on the roster that are able to perform at a high level come April and May. Um, and not just look to continue to kind of backfill the roster that was devoid of some talent relative to the, you know, the exodus that we had when we lost to L.A. and, you know, we decided to kind of build on a career arc around Damon C.J. So we're not going to lose sight, Cass, of, you know, finishing third in the West, winning the Northwest Division in a year was hyper-competitive. But we're also going to realize that we need to kind of view our future this summer through the lens of how are we going to be more impactful and play at a higher level come playoff time next year. Neil, in trying to make trades in this marketplace right now, has it been complicated by the fact there are so many bad contracts around the league from the salary spike years that it's just hard to find basketball trades to make your team better? Well, I think it's going to be, Woj. You know, I think, I think the league is divided right now into two different kind of categories. And, you know, one is teams with salary commitments that are looking to improve because they're invested in their roster. And then we have another segment of teams that are resetting their timelines relative to the dominance of a few teams that, you know, I, I know Daryl talked about it on the last segment. You know, we should all be chasing Golden State. It doesn't necessarily mean we're all going to do that on the same timeline. So, you know, one of the advantages when you look at it cap-wise, and Bobby can speak to this, You've got 15 teams that are either in or within $5 million of the luxury tax. So there isn't a lot of financial flexibility to make deals with those teams. But one of the advantages we have, we have an incredibly aggressive owner in Paul Allen. He believes in the core of this group. He wants to improve the group. And we've got two really good trade exceptions. We've got a $13 million trade exception from the Allen Crab trade. We've got one at 3.5 from the Noah Vonley trade. And we're viewing those trade exceptions as if they're room when it comes to making deals and acquiring players. So it's an advantage we think we have relative to the marketplace where we don't necessarily have the cap room. But we have a lot of liquid contracts, and we do have two major trade exceptions where we can absorb players that we think can fit into our group that can advance this group going forward come playoff time next year. Neil, is, is there a wrong perception in this league right now where when you win 49 games and you make the playoffs in consecutive years, maybe not reach a, an NBA Finals, that um, that's just not good enough these days? Well, it is. And, and I think that, you know, look, it really comes from – you know, organizational priorities, Bobby. You know, what, what are the goals? What are the expectations? You know, our owner holds us to an incredibly high standard. Um, he does believe that the litmus test for success is playoffs. So, you know, internally we can't disregard what we accomplished during the regular season. But in terms of fulfilling expectations from ownership and our fan base, you know, it, look, it was a very disappointing way to end. You know, we won 49 games, but we lost the four that mattered the most. And, again, unique matchup. Two elite players in Drew and Anthony that were playing at an incredibly high level on both ends of the floor. And, you know, we just didn't handle it, you know, as well as we could have. So I think we have to look at it more as an opportunity than a challenge in that, you know, if we had been more competitive, we had won that series, maybe we're not as critical in terms of the eye that we bring to continuing to build this roster. And I think now that we can view it through the lens of, there are deficiencies. We need, we need to move forward. We need to probably add more veteran players this offseason that we can put into big-time playoff games and not be as vulnerable to 
you know, injuries to certain guys in the starting lineup or in our top seven. So, you know, I, I do think it's getting a little bit out of hand that, you know, if you don't win 65 games, you're not in the finals, you should blow up your roster, make your fans sit through 20 win seasons in the hopes of getting lucky in the draft four or five years in a row. So I, I, don't, I don't think any fan base should have to sit through that, and I certainly don't expect our fan base to sit through it because 90% of the time it's fool's gold and it doesn't work out. Well, you certainly have the opportunity to already build on a talented roster. So good luck this offseason, Lee, into the draft and free agency. Really appreciate you coming on, Neil. Thanks for having me on, guys.